Hey class, it's Kristen. I'm going to show you how to design a quick little puppet, digital puppet in Photoshop, and then we're going to animate that with keyframe animation in After Effects. In Photoshop, let's start with a 1920 by 1080 frame, but we're going to be changing the size of this later. Um, and then let's name this after our character. We don't need the video timeline today. Uh, we are only working with still image layers. Um, we're going to be building our puppet and all of their body parts on separate layers um, and then doing all the animating, all the time based work in After Effects. So we, we don't need the Photoshop timeline. First things first, since we are not animating in this frame, 1920 by 1080, um, it almost doesn't matter what size. In fact, the size should be dictated by the size of the character. But before we get too far, I do like to have a, a reference for myself so that I know what um, how close I can zoom in to my artwork. So I like to make a guide layer. And I'll use this marquee tool make sure that it is set to a fixed size 1920 by 1080 pixels and then that means wherever i select here it will be exactly 1920 by 1080. i'm going to highlight that just outline it in red so with my red color selected and i'm still in the marquee tool i will right click here and i will use the stroke option And I will set this to, let's try 10 pixels. This is the width of the stroke. Okay, I will deselect. Now we have our guide layer and let's make our image, our canvas size bigger. Okay, I'm going to zoom out and actually I could make this a little bit wider. Okay, we can always crop this down if we need. Okay, here's my guide. And for clarity, let's unlock our background layer and I will just fill in everything to be the same color. I'm pressing Option Delete and that is a quick way to just fill the entire layer. Oops. Okay, we can lock this background back. We've got our guide layer. We can um, tuck that away. And then now let's start with our rough sketch of our character. We're just going to animate, design and animate um, a little arm today, um, but you will design um, a full character. B for brush. You can choose your favorite sketching brush, but here is what we'll be doing. So let's say in our scene, we'll have a character giving a flower to someone and then being rejected. So normally your rough sketch in Photoshop, especially for puppeting, is going to be dictated by your storyboards and your thumbnail drawings, which are just your rough sketches. So you need to know your camera angles, how big you need to draw, how big the scene is. So if this is our 1920 by 1080 frame, we kind of are roughly staging the action like this. And then in Photoshop, we want to draw every single pose that we need. So I will need a hand 
with like a closed fist and then I'll need a hand with an open after uh, the flower is dropped. So he's going to offer the flower, off screen is rejected, and then he will throw the flower down. So I'll need two hand shapes. But this will be roughly my layout for the screen. This is how big my hand is and the arm pieces. And um, I can crop my canvas size after I've designed it. So now let's draw our final artwork. I want the upper arm separate. So let's just use some nice textured brushes, things that we can only do in Photoshop that Harmony isn't going to be super great at. Okay, here we have our puppet, um, and it's cut out. All the body parts are on different layers.
my body FPO or for placement only. It's a shape. Oh, let me just fill that in. We don't want any holes. So it's a good idea to solo each layer to make sure that you have all the artwork you need and it's finished. So option eyeball will solo the layer. Okay, that's the head for placement only head. Here's my upper arm, lower arm, hand position one, hand position two. Where's my flower? Flower here. So especially with body parts, we're going to be rotating these to animate. So you just want to make sure, especially with puppets, you want to make sure that their joints are going to overlap. So even with the neck here on the body, I just rounded that off. Rounded overlapping shapes just sort of hide the seam a little better. So if I were to select all the pieces of the lower arm, Command T to transform that, and I will click and drag my anchor point to where the elbow is. If I move all of that, right, it'll hide the little seam because I've rounded off my joint connections. All right, so we are ready to go. Let me just uh, prepare this now for After Effects. I'm gonna keep my rough hand drawings. I don't know why, but I'm just gonna move them closer. Now, we can crop this smaller because we don't want After Effects to run slow. So we're only saving the artwork that we need. We have our framing here. Let's crop that, hit return. And since this is such a simple puppet, um, we don't need any folder organizations, um, but watch the other video uh, for a more in-depth um, discussion on how to set up a more complicated character with more body parts, with um, facial features, and um, many more different um, positions for each hand and arm. Okay, now we are going to head to After Effects and import our Photoshop character documents. Um, any backgrounds that we might have painted separately in a different Photoshop file, we want to import all that into After Effects, um, any props. So before we get into After Effects, our folder structure is very important. So here is my scene and all of my Photoshop designs will go in the elements folder and then I will save my After Effects projects into this project folder. I might have multiple After Effects projects for the same scene if I decide to save different versions. Um, even though I have autosave turned on in After Effects, sometimes I still like to save different versions myself. Version 1, version 2, sometimes if I come back the next day to work on the same scene, I might just duplicate that After Effects project and just name it um, and that way it's just creating redundancy, um, making different versions and having autosave is just going to be the safest, most secure way to be, um, in case any of the files get corrupted. Here we are in After Effects. Let's set up our folder organization. Nineteen twenty by 1080 square pixels, 24 frames per second, three second scene. Um, if your After Effects is showing you the time in frame, then just command click to scroll through the different options. So you can look at it in terms of frames or in terms of time code. 
So you can do that right here in your comp timeline. Command click. All right, let's import our character. Command I. And we want to make sure we're importing this as a composition and retain layer sizes. bring our character into our main comp. Actually, let me rename this. I like to name it main, just so I'm not confused later. Now let's save our After, After Effects project before we move on. Okay. So we have our character in our main comp. Let's line that up. And then let's double click, go inside our character comp and start setting things up. I'm gonna right click some of these layers, set them to guide layers um, because it'll help me see while I'm working in the character comp, but I don't need them out here in the main comp. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring in another background. I have other scene elements that I'm bringing in. Um, but sometimes just having a color card in the back of the, Background helps. Um, I don't need my guide layer, although it's helpful while I'm working in the character comp. And I certainly don't need my, my rough drawings. I'm just going to turn that to a guide layer. So you can turn them, you can turn the visibility, visibility on and off. Um, but a guide layer is different and it definitely won't take up After Effects like power to render it or even to recognize that it's a layer that's turned off. So it's just a good habit. All right, now we get to the fun part. Let's start rigging our puppet for animation. So we want to connect the hand to the lower arm to the shoulder so that we can rotate it. So we are going to set anchor points on all of our body parts. So we can solo each layer and with the Y tool or what they call the pan behind tool, we just want to move this anchor point to where the joint naturally would be. So the wrist, that's right. I think that stayed from Photoshop. Uh, the flower can have an anchor point. We can just put it at the place where uh, the hand will be holding it. Okay, the lower arm should be rotating from the elbow. And the upper arm rotates from the shoulder. And we might as well set the anchor point on the head too. So that'll be at the jaw where it connects to the neck. And oops, the body, you can leave it in the middle. Um, we're not going to be animating it, but generally it could be sort of where the hips might be. OK, now let's parent all of the arm pieces. So we want the lower arm to connect to the upper arm. And we want both hands to connect to the lower arm. Now, I'm not going to, well, yeah, we can parent the flower. Let's parent the flower to the hand. Flower to the hand. And then hand two. Let's uh, turn that off for now. So if we grab the upper arm, which is the top of this chain, and we select R for the rotation attribute. Now we can rotate that and everything moves with it. I'll turn off my rough animation layer. I don't need that. All right. So now we can actually start animating. Let me just save.
So before we start animating, let's set keyframes on everything first. So P is the position keyframe. T is the opacity. R is rotation. S is scale and A is anchor point. We'll mostly be animating on the rotation, but it's a good idea to set keyframes on all your attributes. That way, if you end up moving it or adjusting it, you don't need to try to remember um, whether you enabled time, uh, whether you enabled keyframes or not, that little stopwatch. Okay. On the extended keypad keyboard, you can use the plus and minus arrows on that number key keypad and shift will let you rotate um, in larger increments. So let's start. Let's find our first key pose, right? Our starting position. You could also use this rotation tool. Um, actually, I'm going to move the upper arm higher up where the shoulder is, would be here. Okay, that's very, very basic animation. But let's just add a little bit of fluidity in the joint. So I'm going to lock down this pose, this final pose. Let's, let's just adjust this a tiny bit. flower. Okay. Now, you see how I have two key poses? I can jump between my keyframes using J and K. These are my two key poses. Let's add a little bit of a breakdown pose. And that will help us keep the joints feeling fluid. So we're going to break the joint. We're going to break that elbow joint and basically rotate um, the lower arm a little bit counter to the direction it's going in. And we'll have a little bit of drag on the flower, just a tiny bit. And that'll feel just a little bit more fluid so we call this breaking the joints in animation. That way there's a tiny bit of drag on that lower arm. All right, and then we can even um, add a little bit of settle too. So we this is our key pose. Let's exaggerate it just a tiny bit. So we'll overshoot the pose just a tiny bit. We'll just go a little bit past what we want tiny bit and then a few frames later 
the whole arm will just settle into its final resting pose. So now it settles just a tiny bit. And yeah, maybe the flower settles just a tiny bit. So it gives you just a tiny bit of emphasis here. So we can quickly add some easing in so that the timing is not so robotic. I'm going to right click, select all those keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant, add easy ease on that. And then I want it to ease into my final resting pose. Here, let's add a little bit on the hand, too. So that'll really settle in. Once again, if you're dealing, if you're animating with linear keyframes, which is these diamond shaped keyframes, and you want to adjust your easy eases, you're easing in, you're easing out, use this graph editor. And you can edit the value of those keyframes and adjust the curves here. You can also adjust the velocity. So you can select keyframes in this view. Well, there's no, we can add a little bit of, of ease here too. So some people prefer to work in the graph view. It, it makes a lot of sense to them. Um, other people find uh, just sort of this view um, more intuitive. feels better. Save. Now let's say the character gets rejected off screen. And then the flower droops. Okay, say at a minute and a half, the flower is going to droop. So I'll show you how to use the puppet tool to do some quick and somewhat easy um, deform animation or like distort animation. Um, instead of drawing the different poses of this flower drooping, I can take this um, artwork layer and then just distort it with the puppet tool. So it's going to look like this. The, it looks like a push pin. It's the puppet pin tool. And before we do anything, um, here's just a quick demonstration of it. Right, I'll set my points on the layer, the points that I want to move. And you'll see that this has a little triangular mesh on it. Um, so I can actually sort of affect the position of this artwork without using the position keyframes. But let me undo all this because there's a certain way that the puppet tool prefers to operate. So we're actually going to pre comp this flower layer. 
So we can right click on that, go to pre-compose, and this can just be called flower comp. You get two options here. I'm going to leave all of my flower keyframes because I had keyframes a little bit before. I'm going to leave them here in this character comp. I don't want to move all the keyframes into my new flower comp. Um, there are instances where you would need to do that, um, but right now we don't. I'm going to leave all of the animation for the flower, whether it's the rotation keyframe or my puppet keyframes. I just want to leave that all in the character level. Now you see this layer icon turns into a comp icon for the flower. If I double click, here is my untouched, unchanged flower layer artwork from Photoshop. There's no keyframes on there. But if I come back out to this level and I show keyframes, you, then all of my rotation keyframes have stayed here. And then now we can add the puppet deformations on this level too. So let's go back to the Puppet tool and let's add some points. With the Puppet tool, it's like it's a great, easy kind of shortcut um, tool in After Effects, but it's not perfect. Um, so it's great for just adding little um, animations without having to create new artwork, but I don't recommend doing any like major movements with the Puppet tool. Uh, it'll just be very frustrating. So I added these three points. Um, it's hard to see this mesh. So let me just change the color of my layer. I'll come to this color swatch and I'll change it to something that's more visible. How about purple? Here, let's see. So a puppet tool is considered an effect. So you'll see it created this effect. If I select mesh under the puppet effect, now I can see this purple outline. I can see that just a little bit easier. And we can adjust the size of the mesh. If you don't see the mesh, then um, go up to this tool properties area and you'll see that there is a button to show the mesh. So you can expand it and you'll see that will expand your mesh, uh, especially if you have any textures floating out here like I do. You just want to make sure that your mesh will encompass everything. Um, and then you can also adjust the density of this mesh network. So it's made up of triangles. And the higher the density of the triangles, right, the, the more definition I have. But also keep in mind, this is going to make your computer work harder because now it's processing more information. So it's, it's a bit of a balance. But you can add your puppet points and just start to see how things are going to move. In addition to puppet points, um, I'm going to bring this density back down to maybe around six. In addition to puppet points, you can add little starch points. Starch will keep things stiff and it won't move as much. So I don't want the flower to move while it's in the hand. So I'll just pin it down with some of this with the starch tool. OK. That feels a little bit more natural. No, I don't want that there. OK. All right. So we've placed our puppet points. You can delete them too. You can select and delete. OK, no, I need that one there. I need a regular puppet pin there. OK. Now, if I select my flower comp, show all keyframes, you'll notice that wherever I made a new puppet point, one of these yellow ones, um, it automatically added a linear keyframe for me at that puppet pin. So with my mesh selected, 
I can select each of these puppet pins and their keyframes, which means we can move it, we'll be able to animate it. So since this is my neutral position, I'm actually going to copy and paste all these keyframes at the beginning. And I'm going to turn these to hold keyframe just in case um, something ends up distorting by accident somewhere in here. If I'm moving things around, it's just very easy, especially when you work with linear keyframe animation, it's just very easy to, to move something by accident. And then when you play it back, you're like, why is that? Why is that move looking so weird? Like I didn't animate that. Um, so I just use hold keyframes to literally lock things down until I need to move them. So now at one and a half seconds, I am going to animate a droop on this flower. So maybe I'll take 12 frames to animate the droop. So, oops, that's because I have all these puppet pins selected. I only want to select one at a time. So I'll animate this coming down. All right. You can see it's not like doing the best job at in-betweening my keyframes. So I'm going to add another position in the middle. And then let me see if I can adjust the expansion too. Um, and I want to make sure that's not adding a keyframe. So every now and then I just press U again to see if Puppet Tool was adding keyframes without me knowing it. So I don't think so. Okay. So it's definitely a little bit wonky. Um, but if I select the mesh again, I can just nudge it just a tiny bit. All right, let's save this and play it back. OK. Gets the point across. Let's add some easing in and easing out here. So I want a little bit of ease out. So right click, keyframe assistant, ease out. It's going to look like this. That way it'll slowly start to bend and then it kind of moves into that pose. And then I want it to ease into this final drooping pose. So I'll select all of these keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, ease in. And that'll slowly ease into that final drooping position. Okay, now it from the top. Okay, so that flower animation is done. Now we have our character drop the flower, so open the hand and release the flower. So that means I'm going to extend the length of my composition because I didn't give myself enough time. That's because I didn't storyboard this beforehand and I did not time out my poses. 
So, you know, the more you kind of have an idea of what you're doing before you start, the better, but that's okay. I'll show you how to adjust. So that means we just need to extend the duration of our composition. So come up to, we're in our character comp, so come up to compositions, comp settings. Let's change our duration. Let's just make it 10 seconds. So we don't have to do this again. 10 seconds. Now, I'm in my timeline. I'm going to zoom out. Minus key. All right. Now, I'm going to select all my layers. Command A. And then I'm going to hit U to hide all the keyframes. Uh, let's try this again. OK. Command A. I have to select one of these layers, then Command A. Now I selected all of them. Now, U to hide all the keyframes so I can see. And then now let's extend all of our layer out artwork to the end of our new duration. So I'm going to select all these layers and the shortcut I can, you know, manually drag it just like in the Photoshop timeline. But the shortcut in, in After Effects is option closed bracket. And you'll see it immediately brought the endpoint of every layer selected to wherever uh, my time indicator was. So to show you again, if I want to trim all of my layers to six seconds, option bracket. If I zoom in, technically this is six seconds and, uh, and one frame. So I would actually go one frame backwards, option bracket. Now this is exactly six seconds. Um, so let's come back to the end here option bracket. Okay, now the only thing that did not get extended was the flower, and that's because the flower was pre-comped. So the pre-comp we made by default was three seconds long, or however my original comp was. If you change the duration, we have to come into this pre-comp now, change this duration as well. So comp settings of the flower, let's just make this all 10 and minimize our timeline. Now, since this is just a plain old layer, I can just come to the end, option bracket, option close bracket, and that extended it. When we come back to the character comp, now you can see it's, it's faded, which shows you that, oh, this comp is actually longer, but you have it trimmed right now to three seconds. So we'll just extend that, option close bracket, and now our flower stays on screen. So we just have to do this to our main comp now. So our main comp um, was only three seconds long also. So let's come back to comp settings or command K. Change this to 10 seconds. Minimize that. And now we can extend this because we had already changed it inside to 10 seconds. So. You can drag this all the way out or use option bracket. And then let's save everything again. Um, a note here, don't forget that if you command click on this time, it'll switch between frames and actual time code with seconds. So here we're looking at three seconds, right? But if we command click, now we can see this is actually 72 frames. Command click. So whichever view you are more familiar with, uh, you can fix that and switch between that here. Command, click. OK, let's finish our character animation. Offers the flower. Rejected. Flower droops. And then now the character is going to drop the flower, release the hand. So now we want our second hand position um, artwork. So let's show opacity on both hands. And I'm going to oh, change this back to time code. Command click. And at three seconds, I want the hand to open. So let's come back to the beginning. Let's change these opacity keyframes to hold keyframes. 
and we can come back to this regular selection tool and I'm going to turn off the opacity on my second hand position from the very start of the shot. Now, when I want the hand to switch, this is when I will animate the, the opacity. So 100% will turn on my second hand pose, and then I will turn off the first hand pose. And whoops, I want that, I want these to be hold keyframes. If they're not hold keyframes, then essentially what I'm doing is fading in and fading out. That's that's ruining the effect of the replacement animation. So hold keyframes, right click, toggle hold. Okay. Now, right, that hand switches. So that's great. And then we want the flower to fall. So we'll animate the flower falling. Now at this point, right? Our flower is still parented to the hand that is turned off. So we could continue to add keyframes on this flower comp while it's still parented to the hand, but that just gets a little bit confusing later on. So what I would rather do is just chop our flower comp layer in half. I'm going to split it, which is shift command D. Now it's split my layer in half right here. And that means the second half of my layer, I am not going to parent it to anything. So it keeps all of my keyframes, right? Because this is a, a straight up duplicate. But by splitting it in half, it allows me to control this second half differently. Namely, I don't want it parented to anything. I just want to be able to cleanly add some um, position keyframes and then animate it downwards. So the flower gets released and let's see, I'm going to add a position keyframe before I start moving it around. So I'll just move this back one frame. And then now I can kind of place it. And then it'll fall out of frame. All right. Now this is the position attribute. And in After Effects, you're given a motion path. And the motion path has handles on it. So I can create a little bit of a curved path here. And just make that feel a little bit more natural. I can come in the middle of the path, and if I move and adjust it, you'll see it automatically adds a keyframe here. So you may or may not want that, but just be aware that this is how motion paths work, um, especially with camera moves. Um, camera moves happen if you're doing it on a linear keyframe, right? And you're wondering why there's like a weird bump in this otherwise smooth camera move. Um, select the position attribute so that it'll show your motion path and you might see there's actually a bump in the curve. So you can kind of adjust that with these handles. Okay, so that's a little weird. I actually don't want this middle keyframe here. I'm just going to control the motion path with as few keyframes as possible. Okay. Okay, and then let's just add a little bit of rotation on that flower so it's not so stiff. So R for rotation. I'm going to add a keyframe here because this is where I want the movement to start. Otherwise, um, 
it'll be slowly rotating from the last keyframe that I had. Um, I have a mouse with a scrolling button. Um, so if you scroll it on the composition window, it zooms in and zooms out. But if you're in the timeline window and you hold down shift and scroll, it lets you scroll left to right. All right, back to rotation. We have a slight rotation on this flower. R for, oops, R for rotation, and then W for the rotation tool. So it'll just slowly fall on its face. Now I'm gonna hit U to show my flower keyframe. And let's see, let's line up my rotation keyframe with the position. Let's add some easing on that also, just coming out of here. Okay. Okay. Okay, so this moment where the hand poses change and the flower drops, it's just a little awkward to me. It's very jarring. I don't have any in-betweens. It just pops from one pose to the next key pose for that hand. So um, we're going to even that out. We're going to create, we're going to like create some in-between frames. Um, and I'll show you how to do that with hold keyframes now so that I can demonstrate a different keyframe technique. So to prepare for that, we'll just command A, select all our layers, just sort of like regroup um, visually. So I want my, I want to see my two hands. We've got the opacity. I also want to see rotation, so I'll shift R on that. And then I want to see my other arm pieces. So I'm going to smooth out the hand animation and then we'll just animate the whole arm dropping back down so uh, we will need rotation on those other arm layers and the arms are still parented to each other so i'm just going to add new keyframes down the line i just clicked on that keyframe um, button and then just clicked and dragged all the way up so it's a good idea to get in the practice of um, just lining up your keyframes and even using the hold keyframe just to lock things into position before you start animating and moving things around again. So here I'm actually going to delay the animation of the opacity because I'm going to animate um, an anticipation with the first hand. So four frames is roughly what you need for the eye to register, like just a, a feeling of anticipation. So I'm going to rotate the first hand down while we're still seeing it. So I've got W for my rotation tool. Just in a few increments. And I'm animating on twos. So on a laptop keyboard, it's command uh, arrow key, right and left arrow to go frame by frame. If you have an extended keyboard, it's going to be page up and page down buttons. So I'm just going to go two frames. We're going to be animating on twos now. And I'm just creating a slight anticipation. And I'm going to kind of match the angle on this 
hand. Yep. Um, all right, so this means I actually need to shift my flower layers, my flower layer animation. So I'm just going to show keyframe. And it doesn't release now until four frames later. So I am going to select all my keyframes and then click and drag, hold shift to line it back up. And then let's adjust the timing of our layer. Okay, so that feels a little bit smoother because we added this little, we added about four frames worth of in-betweens. So now the wrist rotates down and then rotates up. While it's rotating, the hand changes, and that's helped to mask um, the fact that we just popped from one pose to the next. Um, and then I actually want to add a little bit of animation on the arm too, so it's not so stiff. Let's see. Okay, I have a slight rotation, a slight rogue rotation keyframe happening. Um, so something is on linear instead of being on hold. So let's see what's happening here. Oh, I see what's happening. This, this needs to be on holds. So I'm going to turn all of these rotations. I'm going to end it on a hold keyframe. So this is what I mean by turning things to hold keyframes just to lock it in place because otherwise it was slowly animating my rotation during all this time. There we go. Okay, so the hand feels better. It's still a little bit pop, poppy. So I'm gonna animate the whole arm. And it made it down as part of that anticipation, two frames. And then now that the hand comes up slightly, two frames. And then now there's a little bit of follow through. Yep. And then meanwhile, the hand will ease well, the whole arm will ease just a tiny bit past that position. Now let's play it. Yep. Okay, so then there's going to be a beat before the character's arm falls. So let's say around here is when the arm will fall. So um, I recommend always animating from the top of the parenting chain first. So we are still uh, in hold keyframes. So let's just um, manually now animate the ease out. So step forward two frames, slowly ease out. Now this is kind of a pendulum, if you remember. except it doesn't swing all the way. So I, I manually add a ease. Okay, so when you animate on holds, at um, on twos, when you animate with hold keyframes on twos in After Effects, uh, it feels a lot like animating in stop motion because you're just moving your puppet incrementally 
and you have to kind of manually calculate, you know, what are the easing in and easing out? What is the follow through? What are the different body parts that are going to be traveling at different rates, you know? Um, so I kind of enjoy that style um, because I started as a traditional animator um, and the TV shows I worked on were After Effects puppeting shows. Um, so I just kind of got used to this style. I, I enjoy, um, you know, animation on twos. It just feels, it feels more handmade than something that can be linear uh, keyframes. But there's a lot of beautiful linear keyframe animation. And like I said in class, most CG animation is actually animated with linear keyframes. And um, animators spend, oop, I don't want to animate this hand. Animators spend most of their time in the graph editor just adjusting those curves to get some beautiful easing in and easing out and some beautiful nuanced timing uh, between those linear keyframes. All right, so as the arm comes down, I'm going to be animating just a little bit of follow through on the secondary arm and this hand. So now that I've laid down some keyframes every two frames, I can just use the J and K button to advance to the next keyframe because it's already timed on twos. So the arm will drag a little bit behind and we'll get that sort of breaking the joints um, illusion and almost like a, a rag doll illusion too. So I'm gonna have the hand exaggerate the, the drag on the hand. So I timed out the, the upper arm, right? I did that first, and then this will show me how much to drag the pieces that are parented to it. OK, by this time, the lower arm has caught up. The hand catching up. And again, these are actually all curves. It's easy um, when you're puppeting because we're just dealing with rotation. And if your anchor points are set at the right origin, right? Like it's just gonna be always moving on a curve. This hand is, is the radius, basically. Let me undo that. Okay, now there's gonna be a little bit of settle or follow through on the lower arm that happens past the point where the upper arm has stopped moving. So this is one of those principles of animation. Follow through. And then the hand will just sort of wiggle just a tiny bit. Okay, so now as you see, we our hand is being cut off here. So let's come back to our comp settings and we can actually adjust the height of our composition. So let's just increase that tiny bit. There we go. Uh, I can come into advanced here and I can actually have it anchored from the top and then increase the height and it keeps everything anchored from that top position. Okay, now if we come back out to the main scene, we can also, let's use our selection tool, right? So what I was saying before, we can definitely turn these to 3D layers, add a little bit of a camera move here. If you don't want that sort of um, parallax effect uh, that happens with multi-planing uh, and 3D layers, 
um, we don't have to we don't have to do that. So a camera will only work on 3D layers. If you don't want to do that, let's make a null object layer new null object, and we are going to parent our character to this null object. And then on the null, we will animate the scale and the position. So we're pretending that this null object, it, it's, it's nothing. It doesn't look like anything. Uh, it doesn't render out. It doesn't export. Um, but it will allow us to parent things to it, and we can animate it uh, as if it was a camera. So in this moment here, I want to zoom out. And before the hand drops is where the camera will end. So here's my position of the end camera position. And then meanwhile, I want to start much closer. So I'll scale that back in. And then if I just drag my null object, I'll start it here. Um, yeah, I don't really want to curve on this path. Okay, and I'll just add quick easing in and easing out on that. And if we turn on motion blur, which is this little button here, looks like a series of circles. Turn motion blur on my character layer and then make sure it's turned on in my timeline. I'll get a little bit of that motion blur uh, during the camera move. Okay. Now my scene is done. Here's command S to save. Now, I don't need to render the full 10 seconds. And I definitely don't need to play it back. So I'm going to adjust the end of my work area. So you can drag this. You can move it around just like in Photoshop. Uh, but the shortcut is N. Um, and you can also move the beginning of the work area too. The shortcut is B. So you can think of B for beginning, N for end. So B and then N and if we spacebar play it back, it'll keep looping um, if that is what you are set up for. Okay, let's save and I'll render it out. So I don't have a background element in here. Um, my composition is set to a black background. Command K for composition settings, right? Back here. Um, I can change that color if I want. And it'll render out with that color card. But ideally, you want to have some kind of scenery, um, some kind of background artwork. All right, save. Now let us render this out. So you'll do composition. Add to render queue. We can send it to Adobe Media Encoder. Um, if you wanted to keep working in After Effects, you can send it to Adobe Media Encoder so that it'll export in the background while you work, while you keep working. You can do this from Premiere too. Uh, instead of exporting in Premiere, you can send uh, your Premiere sequence to Adobe Media Encoder. This will export in the background so that you can keep working in Premiere or keep working in After Effects. Uh, just know that it'll it'll slow your computer down a little bit, but it doesn't tie up your 
program. So if you're short on time, you need to render and set up a bunch of scenes. Um, use the oops, use the Adobe Media Encoder queue. If not, you're just rendering one scene. You're done working. Just add to After Effects's own render queue. So we'll check best settings, best full quality, 1920 by 1080. We want the frame rate, 24 frames per second. Now here, work area only, right? We set the B and N points, beginning and end points of our work area. We did that already. It shows us that our duration is six seconds. Um, so let's do that. Just know that you have an option to render the entire length of the comp, which was 10 seconds, um, but we don't need all that extra information. So work area. Now output module. Depending on your workstation, you might not have um, Apple ProRes here yet. So make sure it's QuickTime. Go under Format Options. Make sure you have Apple ProRes 422HQ. If you don't, then animate it, I'm sorry, export it with animation compression because that's still a very high quality. Um, and then bring that into Adobe Media Encoder. That should always have Apple ProRes 422HQ um, installed for you. Um, just another note here, if you are um, anim animating something in After Effects and you want to render it out with a transparency, um, and or an alpha channel, what we call. You can only do that with animation format, and you need to change this depth from millions of colors to millions of colors plus. Um, you have to change the channels first from RGB to RGB plus alpha, and then you get these other options enabled. So why don't I just show you uh, what that would look like? So we'll render it with an alpha channel. No blue background. And then we'll make sure we're saving this to the right place. And I always put the date on my files. All right, render. Now, again, you can press caps lock on your keyboard, and that'll speed up the render. So let me just change the name here, because this is actually, it's no longer the full scene. It's just my character animation character animation with an alpha channel. Um, and QuickTime doesn't know what to do with the alpha channel, so we won't be able to see it there. Um, let's import it back into After Effects, and I'll just show you. OK, so let's bring in our character animation export with the alpha channel. And we'll bring it in as footage this time, because this is a rendered movie. This is a rendered video. So now we bring it in. All of this is footage. It opens it in the layer window. You know, we, we can't access our pieces anymore. This is an exported video. Now, remember, we did um, export it with an alpha channel, though. So if you turn on transparency, now you can see here's this video at animation compression instead of Apple ProRes, um, and it has an alpha channel on it. So now we can add um, other elements to the scene. Or you can even take this video back into a Photoshop timeline, or you can take it into a Harmony timeline. You could take it into a Premiere timeline and, com and combine it with other assets. So you've got this animation, um, this, this animation that's been puppeted with keyframes and After Effects. You can render it out with an alpha channel on the video with animation compression using RGB plus alpha 
settings. And then now you've got um, just another element of your scene that you can take into another software.